Easton is the oldest public high school in the city of New Orleans. It breathes the city because it holds a lot of tradition. When you look towards the school, you see this castle. And within this kingdom, everybody is a family. We travel from place to place, you know, um, trying to figure out where could we go, because, you know, New Orleans is our home. I grew up in uptown New Orleans. I moved to Hammond, Louisiana. I grew up in New Orleans, born and raised. I had to evacuate to Dallas, Texas, about eight hours away. We were determined that we were going to make it. Well, if this school didn't make it, the city would no. It is no either or, correct? It is both. Every child had a book, and every child had a seat. Okay, he said it's 20 degrees Celsius. Because so science is just or more important. It was a beacon. Got it? Got it. And it gave momentum to others that wanted to come back and open schools. It could not have happened without everybody working together and saying, you know, this is our city, this is our school. Without the school, what, where do we have to go? I mean, to get an education and to possibly venture out into other worlds and come back and help our community. If the school wouldn't have reopened, what future would we have? If you talk to any grower, they hate to see any of their product that they've worked for months and months to grow go to waste. And so what we do is we work with those growers to find a way to make sure that product doesn't go to waste. My name is David Bobanik, and I'm the executive director of Rotary First Harvest. We connect farmers, truckers, volunteers, and food banks for hunger relief. Gleaning is, is harvesting unmarketable product. Whether that's going to a grocery store and picking up their day old bread, that would be gleaning, to what we're doing here, which is fresh produce, you know, straight from the orchard. My name is Adam McCurdy, and I'm the field production manager here at Oxbow Farm. Yeah, it's amazing to to think about the food going to people that need it um, because there is so much waste. So many times it's not economically viable for us to go in there. However, um, there's, 
that, that crop is still completely edible. And the fact that we are getting food to folks that need it just keeps us going. Since the beginning, the key for Rotary First Harvest has been to connect and collaborate. So we don't necessarily own trucks, we don't own farms, but we work with those who do to help them get their produce into the food banking system. If this Saturday morning you're free from 9 to 12 a.m., 9 till noon, we'll be having the Rotary First Harvest packing party at the Northwest Harvest Warehouse in Kent. We have a truckload of gala apples coming in, about 60,000 pounds. We'll be repacking those. We'll be going out to food banks next week. We'll also be repacking peas. So if you're available uh, this Saturday morning, I really hope you can make it there. It should be a great way um, to spend a morning with uh, friends and fellow Rotarians. This food bank has really been a blessing to me. It, it, in fact, it has helped a lot of people sustain life. Do I need, right, some, take yeah, care. I need some frozen vegetables? Fresh frozen vegetables. Mom, mom will be proud of me. <laughs> what I would say to the people that volunteer or coordinate the food bank, you're doing an awesome job. I thank you from the bottom of my heart very much. If you don't hear from other people, they also thank you. You have great. Every Rotary project anywhere in the world always started out with one person who had an idea. And then they were able to grow and develop that idea by getting other Rotarians engaged and using that powerful network of Rotary to really change the world. You want to too? Thank you. Water is a basic need for human beings, and without it, a lot of other diseases come in. The Rotarians in Sunyani Central, it was their appeal to focus on a disease called Brulee ulcer. When we partner, we come up with the right answers and the right ideas. Rotary has provided more drinking sources of water than any single NGO in Ghana. We have done more than 50 balls and have gone into so many communities. When a Rotarian makes a promise, people here truly believe that we'll keep that promise. The community of Delagrande is about uh, uh, over an hour and a half by very bumpy, very hilly, several 
incredibly steep hills. Um, so really only all-terrain vehicles or jeeps can get through there. My name is Jenny Huntley and I'm a registered midwife and I've been volunteering with Midwives for Haiti. Many women have told me they've come from quite a far distance. An hour, even a couple hours of walking. Uh, women seem to really um, be drawn to having someone just do a, a quick assessment of them and feel their belly and hear that the babies hear the baby's heartbeat and hear that everything is going well. Because of the Jeep, we're going to be able to run these mobile clinics to include places like Delagrande that we haven't been able to go to because of distance. My name is Hannah Warren. I'm the founder of Jule and a former Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar to India. Maheshwar is an ancient village on the edge of the Narmada River in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Weaving is a local tradition and today there are over 4,000 weavers living there. I first went to Maheshwar in order to pursue a photography project that would document female weavers wearing saris that they'd woven themselves. And I was really surprised when I got there to realize that these women couldn't even afford to own a single sari that they had woven themselves. They had this incredible talent and skill, and yet they couldn't actually afford to own a sari. That really inspired me to start a project that would empower these women to become financially independent and to rise above the middlemen who exploit them. So I decided to create Jule, which is a nonprofit social enterprise that concentrates on investing in women so that they can create a brighter future for themselves, their families, and their communities. Rotary really helped us to expand the scope of what we're doing. Now, just two years down the line, we're working with over 100 women. Ultimately, our goal is to work with over 1,000 women because we believe that investing in women can create sustainable and measurable impacts in this community that will help to end child labor and ultimately alleviate the cycle of chronic poverty.